Well, despite three years of good returns since the global financial crisis, we still think equities are one of our preferred asset classes in the medium term from here. And that is much to do with the expected return we expect from global equities, which is much higher than for, say, government bonds. If you look at US long-term government bonds, yields for these bonds have collapsed significantly over time and are now at historic lows. At current inflation levels, that means, at best, you're earning negative real returns in these bonds. And obviously, in the worst case, bond investors face significant loss of purchasing power if inflation expectations in the long term would pick up. Now, on the other hand, equities, they can be volatile in the short term, but in the medium to long term, we do expect returns of between 6 to 8% from global equities. That is supported by a good dividend yield of 2 to 3%. And importantly, again, looking at history, equities have been uh, able to retain their purchasing power over time. If you look at, for example, the Dow Jones Industrial Index since the 1900s, we've seen significant periods of capital growth which have been interrupted by decades of consolidation. And we believe we are going through such a decade of consolidation at the moment and would highlight the importance of dividends as contribution to a total return for a global equity investor at the moment. The Ashburton Global Equity Portfolio was specifically designed with longer-term equity investors in mind. So it consists of 20 large caps, global leaders in their respective industries, uh, and we really believe with the pricing power that these companies have in attractive markets, and as a result with their ability to not only reinvest where opportunities are, but also to give consistent cash returns, in fact growing cash returns back to shareholders, all of that should be an attractive proposition for investors in the kind, low yield, low growth environment. One can see that if one looks at performance for the global equity portfolio for the last 12 months uh, until the end of September, the portfolio has returned over 30% and that is well above the return for global equities uh, as a whole in, if you would look at the benchmark. The investment style we use for the global equity portfolio can be best described as GARP, so growth at a reasonable price, as we look for relative value within equities globally, with a special focus on quality, which is usually understood as sustainably growing dividends. So in the first step, we look at uh, attractive industries from a top-down level, and there we have, of course, the help of the asset allocation team at Ashburton, as well as the regional equity teams. Then the global equity team moves on to the final stock selection and there we use as a broad brush first the Ashburton in-house screening tool which really scores companies within a global sector according to fundamentals and earnings momentum and revisions. And then for the ultimate stock selection, we really look very closely also at something called cash return on cash invested, really a cash-based return on capital employed framework, which is monitoring whether these companies with their strong market position in an attractive industry are able to, on a sustained basis, deliver cash returns over and above their cost of capital year after year after year. Because ultimately, it's that excess cash return where we expect part of that to go towards shareholders, back to shareholders for both dividends and also share buybacks. We believe our current positioning within global equities is really cautiously optimistic. We had some encouraging news recently from the central banks in Europe and the US with increased monetary stimulus. On the other hand, the growth outlook for next year looks still quite challenging because fiscal consolidation both in the European periphery will continue and potentially in the US will start. So accordingly, we are fairly balanced positioned at the moment across sectors and regions with a specific focus, of course, for the global equity portfolio on stock selection. We have some key positions in emerging markets, which is reflecting our view that we expect China and Chinese growth to stabilize over the next 12 months or so. And even in Europe, we do find increasingly companies that are listed in Europe 
who are global leaders in their respective industries and maybe don't have much exposure to Europe itself, but come at discounted valuations because of their listing there. And we do expect that to normalize over time as well. Having said that, there's one sector we would exclude uh, from that in Europe, and that is financials, where we expect US uh, financials to outperform uh, over the Europeans still, as the US housing market is definitely further along in the required healing process.